American rapper Ja Rule is in the Bahamas with his business partner. Billy McFarlane is an amazing entrepreneur. He can convince anyone of pretty much anything. Heating up Netflix and Hulu is the documentary about the Fire Festival, and this has forced Ja Rule to finally speak out on his involvement. Now, I watched this weekend, the entire thing was a show. We're just lucky no one got murdered. Now, Soldier Boy, he trolled Ariana Grande all weekend after the internet realized that Seven Rings, well, it stole his swag. The Drake sporting curse, it lives on with him predicting that the Rams will win the Super Bowl. Now, Cardi B, she beefed with Tommy Lauren. Adrian Broner, he also was a little delusional after his fight with Manny Pacquiao. He still thinks that he won, but the internet was there to prove him wrong. We got lots and lots to get through. Of course, it's a Monday, so let's get right down to brass tacks. No. I'm in the hospital. You lie so much Let's send the location. Number one. What's going on, fam? It's your boy Michael McCredden, and welcome back to Famous News. Now, don't let my set fool you. I actually filmed the show in Toronto, and here it is cold as balls. It's minus 20, and I got my weather report from the one and only Frankie McDonald. He's the man. This is Frankie McDonald. My own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Major winter storms head towards Maine on Sunday, January 20th. We're actually gonna have a little bit more on him later in this video. All right, let's get into our top story. We're talking all about fire, the greatest party that never happened. Now this dropped on Netflix over the weekend, and if you don't know the story, well, uh, a New York entrepreneur by the name of Billy McFarland, he got way in over his head and he tried to put together the most epic music festival of all time. Now this doc, it speaks with all those behind the scenes. I mean, they paid Kendall Jenner over a quarter million dollars for one social media post. They then lost the island. It was like Pablo Escobar's island. Then they weren't able to fulfill the housing requirements they had promised people. They were supposed to be staying in villas and what they got were like some like world tragedy tents. Then there was a thunderstorm really hit the fan. They started doubling down, getting investors to give them more and more loot to a sum of $27.5 million. Then those who had bought tickets, well, they started aggressively calling them to spend even more. People were comparing this event to more like the Hunger Games because really hit the fan. Now in this film that I watched, the doc, well, there were three moments that really shocked me. Now there was a scene where in the middle of organizing this trip or this event, well, Billy McFarland, he passed out on the beach asleep with a beer in his hand. Now Billy actually comes across as a lovable fool, but in the end, you see how despicable this man truly is and what lengths he was willing to go to, you know, get where he wanted to be. And today, well, he lives in jail. He's facing six years behind bars. Now near the end of the dock, there's this woman from the Bahamas who fed workers and patrons day in and day out. She ended up losing her life savings to a sum of $100,000. Now this was on the faith that she would be repaid. It never happened. Now on the upside, a GoFundMe page has since been created. The goal was to raise $123,000 and they've surpassed that with over $130,000 going directly to her. It's verified, it's all legit, absolutely amazing. Now as for Ja Rule, who was featured heavily in the film, he was there hyping up the company, he was there planning the big events, and then he was desperately trying to clean up the mess. Well, he's now playing the victim card. Yeah, over on Twitter he stated, I had an amazing vision to create a festival like no other. I would never scam or fraud anyone. What sense does that make? I too was hustled, scammed, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. Now the third part of the doc that really caught my interest, it was really shocking. Now there's a man who helped organize this event from the get-go. And then Billy McFarland, he forced the man to agree to perform a sex act just to save the festival. Now at the end of the day, he didn't have to do it, but it really shows you how much of a shit show this actually was and how everyone was losing their shirts. One man like almost lost his dignity. Now in a follow-up story from our last famous news we dropped on Friday, well, uh, we're talking about Ariana Grande's track Seven Ranks, and she's been accused of stealing from Soldier Boy's 2010 song, Pretty Boy Swag. Now, he's released his own comparison video via Instagram, and he tweeted out, give me credit, period. Now, as soon as I'm done reporting on this news, we're gonna get working on a Soldier Boy updated before their famous video. He truly is having the biggest comeback of 2019. In related news, Drake, he's notorious for cursing sports teams. He showed up to the Conor McGregor fight, Conor lost. The Toronto Raptors, well, you know, that was obvious. Now it's been long documented that whatever team he roots for, they end up losing. 
Well, leading up into the uh, the Super Bowl, well, he was not sure who to root for for the AFC or the NFC, so he decided to rep all four teams. Now, for those of you who take this extra seriously, well, in order of sequence from bottom to top, it's uh, it goes to show you that the Rams, they are who Drake is cheering for so he may just be costing them the Super Bowl. So Drake's essentially rooting for everyone so that he doesn't curse any team, but now if the Rams do lose, well, the Drake curse, it lives on. Now, if you're on social media over this weekend, you would have seen some major beef going on between Cardi B and Tommy Laren. Now, Cardi hit up Twitter just last week where she posted, thousands of federal employees who must continue working without pay. Our country is in a hellhole right now. Now, Tommy, she replied, looks like I am Cardi B is the latest genius political mind to endorse the Democrats. Ha! Now, Cardi, she responded, telling Laren she would dog walk her if she didn't leave her alone. And Tommy, well, of course, she's not one to, uh, to just take that and go on. She replied, I'm sure you would. Still doesn't make your political rambling any less moronic. Now, Cardi, she then called Laren a sheep, writing, you're so blinded with racism that you don't even realize the decisions the president you root for is destroying the country you claim to love so much. You are a perfect example of no matter how educated or smart you think you are, you still a sheep. Oh my gosh, this isn't a versus video, but if it was, I would totally put my money on the woman from the Bronx, both with her ability to beef and also just for her political views. Now, Tommy Laren's out to lunch. Now, next up, we oh, I just lost some subscribers. Now, next up, we got Adrian Broner. He's only 29 years old, and he took on a 40-year-old Manny Pacquiao. He didn't win, but he still felt like he did. He stated, They thought I was going to come in here and be in the mud, and they was just going to move around me and not F me up. And I came in, and I gave them what they wasn't looking for. Um, If you ask me, I feel like I won the fight. I'm not about to sit here with a sad face. You know, I'm all right, I'm all right. At the end of the day, I'm still AB. I'm the same person. You'll never see me fight like this. Y'all never seen me in shape like this. I dedicated myself, I put in the work, and I came and I worked my ass off. Now, if the judge's score wasn't enough to prove to Adrian that he lost, well, the internet, it was there to remind him. Check out this piece put together by Rob Lane Edits. It's an absolute masterpiece. What did you think about the fight? What you, I beat him. Everybody out there know I beat him. Oh, wow. Seems like I All right, moving on to what's trending on YouTube. We have Goon Squad rebuilding a wreck 2014 Dodge Viper. And this is TA Time Attack Part 13. Check out this mechanic in this clip. Can't wait to take it down the drag strip for the first time. Man. Because I've honestly never owned a V8 before. Or a supercharger. Or a supercharger for that matter. That dude is more handy than anyone around a car and he's doing it all with just one arm. Okay, so there's lots going on following the fight between Manny Pacquiao and Adrian Broner. The post-fight conference, well, it hit trending. I'd like to say 40 is the new 20. I think he proved that tonight. The champ looked beautiful. And now it's uh, open for questions for the champ. Anything you guys want to talk about? Now the channel that posted this is Seconds Out. And they've been getting huge views. They were at the Logan Paul versus KSI fight. And they're doing all this with just 200,000 subs. Good for them. Now, did any of you guys lose any money, you know, betting on this fight? We do know that Soldier Boy, he's down 100K. Yo, Pacquiao won for real? Yeah. God damn, bro. <laughs> Another video trending is, is this the nicest mailman you'll ever meet? This was posted by Inside Edition. Hi, we're not home. Okay, I'm gonna take him back to the office. Okay. Watch the personalized service that say? follows. From your Uncle Michael. Good old Uncle Max. I really don't know how this is news. This man is now being praised as the nicest mailman in the world. What he did is he hid the package in the recycling bin. But next week on Inside Edition, the recycling bin was picked up by a garbage man. And the ladies' door camera? Well, it's more action-packed than a trip to the movies. We also have Rudy Mancuso and Anwar Jawabi, and they're back at it with The Shrinking Machine. It also stars Marcus Johns and a cameo from Kane Kong. This guy's literally bigger than life. I ain't got time for the shenanigans today, bro. Today I got time. Dog, I'm gonna give you a pass, bro. Go home, all right? That's funny, because your mom gave me a pass last night. It's cool to actually see sketch comedy working on YouTube. I'm proud for these guys. All right, finally wrapping things up with who to follow on the come up, and of course, Babe of the Day. Now with who to follow, I'd like to shout out the fans, those who support this show, those who hit me up in the DMs and via email, and today is no exception. We've got a guy by the name of Patrick Musico. 
I hope I said that correctly. He wrote me this. Hey, I'm a hockey player born in the GTA. Been watching before they were famous for a few years now, and it always keeps me busy when I'm on the road for hockey. I'm a big fan of the show and would love it if you gave me a shout out on Famous News. Also love how you represent Canada and Toronto. Oh, that kid knows how to butter me up. You got a shout out. Now your babe of the day is Valerie.c underscore or Valerie Cassette. Now she got 1.4 million followers, well deserved. And uh, there's little known about her on the internet. She is from my neck of the woods. She actually resides in good old Montreal. And uh, well, someone should send her this video because I ain't shouting her out for my health. You know what I mean? And finally on the come up, now we have a man I've wanted to introduce on this show for years. Now he's another Canadian and uh, he's been reporting the weather for decades now. Now I actually want to make him my official weatherman. His name is Frankie McDonald, 1984 on Instagram. This is Frankie McDonald, my own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Another major earthquake is headed towards Japan sometime in 2019. He's the only man I surely trust with my weather news. He's also got 175,000 followers and he recently released a book. Good for him, he's doing big things and he's a hard worker, really love that guy. All right, I'm wrapping up this video guys. Thank you so much for tuning into Famous News. Now we post these videos every day around four to 6 p.m. Eastern time. To make sure you never miss out on one, please turn on post notifications. We appreciate all the support. My name is Mike McCrudden. I'll see you guys in the next one. Boom! It's murder!